G'day mate, how you going? Welcome back to the Green and Gold Life. Right, yeah, here we are, we're back at it again. <laughs> and uh, I've had to come back out here and shoot a little bit of it again because uh, we had an issue with the, uh, with the microphone, so uh, yeah, technical difficulties even plagued the most professional of us. <laughs> so, um, uh, I have done a little bit of work to these handlebars, but essentially what I wanted to do was go through some rust removal methods. Um, so I have the handlebars here from my daily mo, and you can see on this set, they've actually been spray painted with some kind of paint and whatnot. Uh, it's already oxidized through, so, uh, and down here, the paint, uh, sorry, the, the chrome, the chrome plating has already started to come off there as well. So, uh, unfortunately these handlebars are non-salvageable in terms of, uh, the chrome condition. And uh, this lot here, I'll show you some, uh, some close-up photos of what it used to look like. There was a potential that I could save these. So we're going to go through the, um, through the hot soapy water, or sorry, the warm soapy water and alfoil uh, removal method. And then we're going to go through the coke and alfoil um, rust removal method as well. So, um, however, spoiler alert. Uh, these are corroded to a point where, um, as well, it's broken through the chrome, so we can't salvage them. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it is. So we'll go through that now, and I'll catch you in a bit. So, in my experience, my numbing work like this is best enjoyed either with a gar or a good beer. So, today we're rolling with a cigar. What do we got here? Oh, the High Castle, Victorian. <laughs> so, it's a Churchill size. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, while our soapy water is still nice and warm, I've actually dumped um, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the clutch lever in there. Try and get that soaking a little bit. So uh, again, while the, uh, the water is warm, what I wanted to do is actually give uh, the soapy water and alfoil me uh, method a quick go first. So um, we'll tackle this side. So there are, some, there are some methods that actually involve submersing this in some water and some soapy water as well, just to loosen it up a bit. So I haven't done that essentially because I don't think I've really got a container big enough that's really gonna fit something like this. So it's just gonna be a little bit more elbow grease for your old matey. <laughs> So um, you will note behind me as well, we sort of got the rear rollers in the, uh, in the electrolysis bath there. So you might've seen that last week, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I'd rather get a prostate check from a leper that comes back with three fingers than do that again, mate, eh? <laughs> oh boy. So the back part of this rail, uh, the back part of this handlebar was severely corroded. And um, the, the, the front part here was, wasn't actually too bad, it was just a light surface. So the alfoil and uh, warm water actually did a pretty good job. Like it didn't take much, but this back half, <laughs> there's a couple of thou worth of decent oxidization there. And uh, I reckon I've got most of it. It's hard to tell. I'll pop a I'll pop a photo up there, but I'm wondering I'm wondering whether I've actually got it all off and it, it is now just pitting. So I think one of the things is you've got to know when to stop, mate. Eh? And I really wish I had considered one of the options where you actually soak it for a couple of hours. So that's what I've sort of done here. So I've actually <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work, but I've actually soaked this rag in the coke. And then, uh, and then just sort of, you know, adhere it to the bars. So hopefully that's going to help me a little bit. I don't know if it's, uh, it's going to or not, but essentially I think I've taken that as far as I can now and, uh, and I've gotten results. So I'm going to park that there for now. 
I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna have a crack with the Coke next. So lessons learned for next time is to introduce a G clamp a lot quicker. So by actually having the bar secured to the bench and you're able to get the old, <laughs> you're able to get your old Joey in behind it there and, uh, and work on it a bit harder. So I'll do that, I'll flip that over now and we'll give it a whirl with the Coke and the Alform and see how that gets on. But yeah, I reckon I've got it to a point now where most of the oxidization is gone and, uh, and we're just left with pitting, which is severe enough to, to bring it back to metal. So let's flip it over now. Let's give that a whirl for a couple of hours. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, see where we wind up, eh? So, one cigar and three beers later, we're done. <laughs> so, um, if I was to compare the two, the soapy water, soapy water and alfoil versus the Coke and alfoil, Coke and alfoil just destroyed it, man. Absolutely did a cracking job. Now, I'm not sure whether that's because I allowed it to sort of soak into the oxidization with the rag. So, essentially, I just um, soaked the rag in Coke and then wrapped it around the, um, around the handlebar. So, that may have played a part. I'm not 100% sure, but... The Coke and Alfoil did a ripping job. Um, having said that, if you're just deal dealing with light corrosion, you might get away with it, but this is too heavily corroded to make a difference. So it's pitted to a point where um, the chrome is sort of right back down to bare steel. So unfortunately, these are probably going to get stripped and, um, and painted. Having said that, I haven't done my third methodology, which is going to be uh, our quadruple steel wool with penetrance. So every now and then I've just been given this, this end a dose with uh, penetrant because I want to hit this with the steel wool and see how we get on. Because this is a little bit finicky, you know, getting in around here and, and all of that. So um, yeah, these bars of cactus, they will get painted. Um, or you could consider a stainless steel option if you still want that chrome look. So we're going to have a go at that now. The last method I wanted to try, which is my go-to method, and that is the use of quadruple zero steel wool and, and a penetrant here. So uh, over the last five minutes, I've just been giving this a quick spritz with the old WD-40 to let that soak into the, um, the oxidization. And you want a little bit of uh, quadruple zero steel wool. Now you need to be wicked mad carefully here, man, um, because you will be stripping off chrome quick smart with this gear, eh? So just gently, gently, as you go, start taking little bits off. And if you if you find you're tarnishing it, um, yeah, again, just be really, really careful. You don't really want to go too hard because you will wear it down. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of spraying it on there and rubbing the oxidization. And it should pretty well just come straight out. Now, I've used this on my Harley in a few spots. So I had a, I had a chrome polish, but it just wasn't getting... It just wasn't getting deep enough. Now, had I have known of the soapy water and alfoil trick, I might have tried that, or the or the coke and um, or the coke and alfoil trick. <laughs> I would have done that. So, um, yeah, leave this with me for ten minutes, and we'll be back. All right, after about half an hour worth of elbow grease, <laughs> bad news, mate. Bad news. So we're down to uh, we're down to bare metal there. Uh, so yeah, this one's far too gone, a little bit like my handlebars. But this side here, is, yeah, it's not too shabby. We still have a few sections that are down to bare metal, but I gave it a quick polish with the auto sole as well, and it didn't come up too bad. You know, the areas that aren't pitted um, and are still flat, nice chrome, yeah, they came up all right, mate, eh? So that would be how I would handle my handlebars <laughs> if they weren't too corroded. So unfortunately, they are off for a good old fair income, um uh, blast and then a powder coat so I would not know how to even think about going about getting that out of there um, perhaps there's some kind of soaking solution uh, I had some I had something you could soak um, it's like some kind of rust off or something uh, a solution that you could soak it in but I don't know what that would do to the chrome so yeah I don't know how you'd go getting that out but 
Oh, maybe you don't. You just live with it. <laughs> anyway, um, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to whip my knob out, mate, and we're going to polish that. So this is my knob here. There's nothing wrong with my knob. It's a little bit small for a knob, but it's a knob nonetheless. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted to do is actually give this a polish and reuse it. So this is for the groomer. We're going cheaply on the groomer. We're not. We're trying not to spend too much there um, because it doesn't need it, man. It's functioning fine. Um, just wants a quick spit polish. We're going to try and reuse uh, most of the parts as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this a polish. I do have some auto sole that is wait, hang on, <laughs> suitable for aluminium. So I thought I'd give that a go. Uh, otherwise, it's onto the calico wheel because I do have a cut and polish, uh, cut and polish compound for the for the calico wheel. So it says here, specialized formula for aluminium and other soft metals. Ooh. Cleans, shines, and protects. Uh, fast and easy to use. Let's give it a whirl, mate, eh? Ah, rightio. In typical caddy fashion, I've gone and gone over the top. <laughs> so essentially, um, where's my other knob? I've got my other knob here. <laughs> Here's my other knob. Essentially, this has like a um, an imperfection from the casting up, up and down there. I don't know if you can see it where the sort of the molds were joined for the casting process. So I've actually gone through with a file and removed that. So now that I've done that, <laughs> if you want a nice smooth polish, you know, you've got to go and remove all of those scratches. So you can see there, I've done a little bit of work to the top of that because there was a few uh, dents and whatnot. So I had a little bit of a look around in the shed and look what I found, a little bit of wet and dry. So i um, uh, going to start off with a P80 get some of those deeper gouges out, and then we'll go down to a 320, then a 1500, then a 2000. So, and then man, that should be shining. So, the only problem that is, more elbow grease, man. <laughs> right, yeah, let's get going. Huh? There we go, so my knobs are well and truly polished, mate, eh? <laughs> Look at that, so that's the difference between the two. Um, here's our typical, usual Scott Bonner. She's been around for a while and here's my new one, so I'm expecting that to oxidise over the years and I'll have to do it again, but um, I only got down to the P1500 on this one and there are still a few scratches and imperfections in it, but I'm sort of happy with that there as it is. So if you are gonna break out the file as well, just be super careful, because I have taken a few scuffs in through here, and uh, and yeah, you, you can definitely see them. So there are some imperfections, but where I've sort of taken the, like the mold joint out of there, or whatever you want to call it, uh, where the mold was was sort of uh, gone through, that, that looks a million bucks, mate, eh? So just made sure I took my time with the P80, try and make sure I got most of the real deep gouges out as best I could and then uh, went up from there. So I found it wicked mad hard to get in here and try and sand that out. So that was a wicked, that was a wicked mad pain in my bum, but I'm happy with where that sits now. So what I want to do is turn my attention to me sprockets. So um, this one here is out of the groomer and I want to give this a polish. So my thought is this is some fair income steel and uh, I'd like to try and tidy it up as best I can. But I'm wondering if this is like a mild steel insert or something, because I can see the oxidization is really only on the insert, you know? So I'm wondering what the difference is between those two steels. So I don't know how we're gonna go with our with our abrasive with our abrasive paper here because yeah, like I said, I reckon that's something like a stainless or a or a spring steel or something that's that's fair income heavy duty. But we'll give it a whirl, man, see if we can't see if we can't do something. Um, but I might break out, I might break out the orbital sander. See how that goes, eh? Rightio, so I did try and give the sprockets a little bit of a polish and yeah, they didn't like it, mate, eh? So I gave up and uh, prepped it for paint and now they're in under their curing. So we've just gone on for the etch primer now. So I'll probably come back over the next few days and start giving it some paint. So I'll see you in a bit, alright? Alright, so we've painted as much as the sprocket as we're willing to. So um, what we don't want to paint uh, is anything that's going to carry a bearing. So uh, for me in here, I haven't, um, I haven't painted in here. 
nor have I painted the back surface of this. So essentially this surface area here is reserved for the cork. So this is the uh, sprocket for the intermediate clutch. So there'll be, a, uh, there'll be a cork glued to another sprocket that'll hit the back of that and then, um, then assist in driving our, uh, our Scotty. So um, this one is for our reel. And you can see there, um, I have done the back and the front because there's no uh, contact there's no contact uh, area for cork on this one. I will have to clean up the inside because I've got a little bit of paint on there. But um, yeah, again, um, we have a part we haven't painted on the inside of the shaft because this is going to be um, a nice fit to our reel. So uh, again, we don't really want anything, uh, any paint on anything that's going to contact a reel, a bearing, uh, a cork, that sort of thing. So this is the back side of our intermediate sprocket. So uh, this one here. Um, we'll have the cork glued to it and it will mate up uh, with this sprocket here and then uh, the chain that drives off the back of this will assist in driving the will assist in driving the mower when we engage the clutch so again I haven't painted in on the inside there because there's a bearing that that sort of sits in the middle there so you will note as well I didn't get terribly uh, terribly fussy around the teeth essentially that's just going to wear off quick smart mate eh? so uh, I haven't really gone too in depth around those kind of areas uh, and then the last one here what's this one for what's this one for <laughs> i can't remember uh, maybe it's just an idler i can't remember what this one's for but again um we've <laughs> we've left out the spot um where the woodruff key is going to run on the on the back of that so is this one for nah Oh, bug it if I know, I can't remember where this one comes from, but I'm sure we'll work it out when the time comes. <laughs> so I painted both sides of that, and we're pretty well sweet. So that's going to be it for me today. Well, on the painting. <laughs> As you can see, I've got the uh, I've got the bench grinder here with the loose leaf calico wheel on it, so I'm about to start polishing some parts. <laughs> Alright, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and consider subscribing to the channel. You guys do me a wicked mad favour and take it easy. I'll chat you wrong. <laughs>